Kia ora team, this is our first look at Achievement Standard 1.2, which requires us to demonstrate an understanding of the function of the body as it relates to the performance of physical activity. Uh, in this session we're going to be looking at um, skeletal functions, joints and movements. The skeletal system is a foundation on which the human body is structured. It's used to support other organs as well as allowing movement to occur. It also provides a number of other functions to the body, which we'll discuss briefly on the next page. Blood cells are produced in the bone marrow of long bones such as the humerus and the femur. Red blood cells have the job of carrying oxygen to the muscles, while white blood cells, their job is to fight infection. With movement, muscles are attached to bones by tendons. This enables movement. The skeleton has a variety of different joints which allow the body to move in a wide range of ways and directions. And we'll go into a little bit more detail about joints soon. Protection. Bones are there to help protect delicate organs such as your brain, which is protected by your skull. Hearts and lungs, which are protected by your ribs. And your spinal cord, which is protected by your vertebrae. And it also provides shape and support, so it's our body's support framework. It provides shape, support and allows us to have good posture. A joint is any point in the body at which two bones meet. These joints allow the skeleton to hold together and to move. There are different types of joints within a human body that allow different types of movements. We'll look at those shortly. Many joints are held together and supported by bands of connective tissue called ligaments. These ligaments attach bone to bone across a joint. Skeletal muscle uh, also surrounds joints and is attached to the bone by a connective tissue called tendons. These different types of connective tissue combine with the structure of the joint provide stability and control the range of movement. So if you look down here on the right you can see an example of a ligament joining bone to bone. And if we look at this muscle on the left here and come down, you can see the tendon, uh, which is responsible for attaching muscle to bone. The first joint we have here is a suture joint. Now, a suture joint is made up of strong connective tissue that joins two pieces of bone together. So it doesn't allow movement, um, but it can allow growth. Uh, suture joints are found in the skull and pelvis. So you can see suture joints down here along there, down the back there. Those are all examples of suture joints and you'll see the same types of joints if you were looking at a pelvis. A ball and socket joint is made up of a round end known as the ball and the depression on the other bone which is known as the socket. In a ball and socket joint movement occurs in all directions and is commonly, well not commonly, is always found in the hip and the joint. Uh, so this one we're looking at here is taken from the hip joint. Now this is probably a good time to talk about range of mo uh, movement which can occur at different joints. Now it really depends on the stability of the joint. So the more stable a joint, the less movement that can occur through it. The hip joint, the ball and socket, is a really good example of a joint that requires a lot of stability. This is because we are weight bearing a lot of the time, so we need to have a, a strong, stable joint to allow us to stay upright. Now, I mentioned before that there's a ball and socket joint in the shoulder as well. Um, because that joint requires um, less stability because there's no weight bearing involved, but there's a lot of movement, because of those two reasons, you'll notice, and I don't have a picture here, but the socket uh, will not be as deep as the socket in the hip joint. So you can see this is rather deep and it, it contains the ball in there. The shoulder joint or the shoulder socket is not as deep as that, so it's more shallow, which is why you see a lot of uh, injuries in sports such as rugby, simply because the, the lack of depth in that socket um, provides less stability, which equals more injuries. But we need less stability in the shoulder joint because we need it to be a free moving joint to lift things up and move and do all those things we do with our upper body that we don't do with our lower body. Hinge joints, they're similar to hinges on a door. This joint only allows uh, restrictive movement between the two bones. So the movement occurs in two directions, forwards and backwards, like that. And a hinge joint is found in the knee and the elbow. 
A gliding joint is made up of two flat surfaces that slide across each other. So in this image, a really good uh, visualization here of two blocks which can slide um, in any direction across each other. So movement occurs in all directions and is found in the hands and the feet. So you can see there an example of a gliding joint in the hand. Finally, a pivot joint. So this joint allows fixed movement between bones. The movement at a pivot joint occurs in a rotary fashion and in two directions, forwards and backwards. Uh, this type of joint is found in the neck. You can see the head turning left and right. Uh, and also at the just below the elbow joint uh, with your radius and ulna, which allows your lower arm to rotate. Okay, now we, we move on to look at uh, what types of movements can occur at a joint. And the first one we're going to look at is flexion. Now flexion is defined as the bending of a joint so that the angle of the joint is reduced. Now if you take a look at the, the angle I've, I've highlighted here with the two blue bars, um, the joint is the hip joint, uh, which is that fulcrum there in the angle. Now as this athlete uh, drives out of the blocks, it requires uh, for a good hard and, and powerful start he needs to drive his knee up towards his chest. So this movement will occur in this direction. And if you can imagine um, as his knee moves, that bar moving with it, you'll notice that uh, the angle of the joint is reduced. So this uh, image here, or this movement, would, would see um, flexion of the hip. You can also see on his right arm, as he drives... Um, this arm, which would have been down here, he drives that up. That is shoulder flexion as well. Extension is straightening of the joint so that the angle of the joint is increased. Now, if you look at Dan Carter here, uh, in particular his left leg, which is behind him, you'll notice that it's bent at the knee. As he, as he brings his uh, leg through to kick the ball, um, his lower leg is going to extend forward to kick the ball. Um, so as he brings that foot down and through to kick the ball, he will be doing um, extension at the knee. So his leg is driven down away from the torso um, into the ball. Abduction is the moving of a limb away from the midline of the body. You can see a crudely drawn um, midline going down through this uh, athlete who's up in the air. Now, so abduction is moving the limb away from the midline of the body. So you can see his, uh, this person's legs have moved away from the midline of the body. Uh, so what you can see here is hip abduction. Adduction is the opposite, which is uh, moving the limb towards the midline of the body. Now, if you look at this basketball player here in the white, defending the ball carrier, it looks like the ball carrier is about to dribble uh, to the right. So, number 10 in the white needs to move to his left. This would require him to push uh, off from this foot, and he would then need to move that foot closer to his um, the midline of his body so he'll be adducting at the hip to do that so that's adduction adding to the midline of the body
Rotation is the circular movement of a bone around a joint, usually the hip or shoulder. An example of this is what happens when the arm rotates around the shoulder when you're swimming backstroke. So if you can imagine the backstroker in the water and as they bring their arm up, there needs to be uh, some rotation happening at the shoulder joint. Dorsiflexion is the movement of the ankle that causes the toes to be raised upwards. This is shown in this image from the first frame to the second frame as she lowers into a squat. You'll notice that that angle uh, in that joint has decreased which brings um, the toes upward. Uh, another common scenario or situation that this would happen would be landing after a jump. Now plantar flexion is the opposite, so it's movement of the ankle that causes the toes to be pushed downwards. Um, the ballerina here going up onto her toes, uh, she has done this movement by performing plantar flexion of her ankle joint. 